Hello my friends, my name is Rich and welcome to Greatest Rock and Metal. On Greatest Rock and Metal I talk about what I consider to be the greatest bands and albums based on my experience of listening to thousands of rock and metal albums and attending hundreds of gigs over the years. If you enjoy this channel please subscribe press the red button so that you do not miss out on future episodes today the 30th of October 2020 a special day in the history of this bank bring me the horizon and that is the subject or they are the subject of today's episode because today they celebrate and we celebrate and I celebrate the release of this post-human survival horror album or EP I call it an album and I'll tell you why later how did I get into Bring Me The Horizon? Well, my first introduction to Bring Me The Horizon was a track of this album. The track was titled Anthem. The name of this album is There Is A Hell, Believe It, I've Seen It. There Is A Heaven, Let's Keep It A Secret. Quite a mouthful for, for an album title. Uh, I just call it There Is A Hell. Great album, but we're not here to talk about that one. But that was my introduction to Bring Me The Horizon. A British band formed in 2004, originating from the city of Sheffield in the UK, most famous for producing Def Leppard and Steel. Hence, the metal that flows through the blood of Bring Me The Horizon. Once I'd heard that, I had to hear this. This was the album before it. Suicide Season. A full-on metal assault. Featuring brilliantly heavy songs, great melodies. And one thing I've always loved about Bring Me The Horizon is their singer Oliver Sykes's lyrics and he has some great lyrics on, on all the albums but I particularly like the ones on Suicide Season and um, what I like about his lyrics is how he sometimes inserts good old British humour in, in the lyrics and uh, they're the things that always make me uh, smile and sing along loud or growl along loud or scream along loud depending on the mood of the track so let's get back to this one post-human survival horror now preceding this album okay let's talk about that is it an album is it an EP well for me, this is an album. I know it's being advertised as an EP, but I call it an album because, well, it's, it's 30, about 32 minutes long. Some of the best albums ever made were only about 30 minutes long. I'm thinking the early Van Halen albums. I'm thinking Rob Zombie albums. I'm thinking Halloween Keeper of the Seven Keys. I'm thinking Rain in Blood from Slayer. They were all albums. So as far as I'm concerned, this is an album. And they should be proud to call it an album and not let it get lost within the EP realm. And we'll talk about why they should be proud of it as an album later. Because, as I was just about to say a little bit earlier, preceding this album was the album Ammo. Which, I'll be honest, I struggled with a little bit. It, it had far too much um, electronic dance music, EDM and pop 
elements to it. Now, I have got no problem with bands experimenting. I, I like my bands who never experiment and just keep producing good album after good album with the same kind of musical style. And I also like the bands that experiment, like Bring Me The Horizon. And, um, but on Ammo, for me, the songs just weren't there like they, like they used to be. Uh, that I could kind of rock out to. There were a few good ones, for sure, but nothing as good as this. So, before I talk about this, let's take a little break and watch Rock Shirts by the Sea. The sky is falling, it's fucking boring, I'm going crazy, isolated. From the first track on post-human survival horror, the first track is titled Dear Diary. This song is the pandemic. This is Ollie Sykes's and the band's thoughts, feelings of living throughout this COVID pandemic life. Especially uh, brutal in countries like the UK where it just does not seem to be disappearing. This song is brilliant in every way. First and foremost, what I noticed with this song this is a true return to form and this is the sound of Bring Me The Horizon as far as I am concerned. I have no problem with the electronica as I call it but I like it to complement the music not dominate the music. Throughout this album all the electronics, the keyboards, the electronic sounds for me complement the songs and what I'm most excited about with this first track is the return of the big stomping guitar riff. Throughout this album there's excellent guitar riffs and guitar playing, monstrous drumming and rhythm work from the bass player as well and brilliant electronic sounds. This time for me the electronics work there's, there's the riffs, the EDM style riffs throughout the album, but they don't interfere with the tracks or they don't form the whole basis of the track, in my opinion. Dear Diary, a brilliant start. The next track is Parasite Eve. Now, I'm not going to talk about Parasite Eve. I'm not going to talk about another track called Obey. I hope you have a lovely day. And I'm not going to talk about Ludens. The reason I'm not going to talk about the, the, uh, those three tracks is because they've been out for a while now and we're all aware of them and all three are brilliant tracks. They fit in superbly in the whole feel of this album. Uh, you've seen the videos, you'll know about them already. So let's move on and just say they are all great. The next track then is Teardrops. Now this was recently released as a, as a as single video. Those of you who know about Bring Me The Horizon will know that Ollie Sykes, the singer, is a big Linkin Park fan. This is the Linkin Park song on the album. The whole feel of the song, the, the lyrical nature of the song, uh, which, which to me seems like it's about depression, and the, the, the little keyboard riff on which the, the, the song is based and the guitar that comes with it very much the first thing that went into my head was a Linkin Park song but not as a rip-off this is a Bring Me The Horizon song with a Linkin Park influence and that is no bad thing and um, 
Teardrops. It's a great track. We uh, skip obey, as I say. Hey, that rhymed. Don't nick that lyric. And we move on for Itch for the Cure, When Will We Be Free? Now, this is just a little musical interlude. And what is fascinating about this little musical interlude is that it comes just before the song King Slayer, which features these beautiful two ladies here, known as Baby Metal. And those of you who know anything about baby metal, if you've been to any baby metal concerts, you will know that baby metal themselves employ um, little intro music uh, to, to many of their songs. And so this particular um, Itch for the Cure is a perfect introduction to Kingslayer because not only does it work with the Kingslayer song, it's part and parcel of the song, really, and, and, and when you, you, you listen to the album, you'll see that they're actually joined to, together. There's no break between them. Um, but it fits within the baby metal style, and Kingslayer comes across as a true collaboration uh, between the two bands, and it is brilliant. It is really brilliant. Now, I talked about a Linkin Park style on Teardrops, on Kingslayer, the first band that comes into my head, again, not as a rip-off, but as an influence, was Prodigy. The keyboard riff that starts Kingslayer. It's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. And then the guitar and the rest of the band comes in, and it's, it's a brilliant collaboration. Um, some Japanese lyrics from, from Baby Metal as well as some English lyrics and uh, again those of you who know um, the, uh, the Baby Metal history or the Bring Me the Horizon history will know that these two bands uh, do have a mutual love and respect for each other and in fact on um, the part of the last um, tour that Baby Metal did for their uh, current Metal Galaxy album Bring Me The Horizon actually went over to Tokyo and, and played a show with Baby Metal, supported Baby Metal. So, brilliant track, Kingslayer. We're going to skip over Ludens. Um, no, we're not, because Ludens isn't next. The next track is One By One, um, featuring the Nova Twins. I have never heard of the Nova Twins. I had to Google them. I had no idea who they were. And this is another um, pop rock type track, but more emphasis on the rock for sure. Um, a little bit more in the, uh, in, in the Linkin Park vein. Um, now, I'm going to say this is the weakest track on the album, but I hate using that word. Uh, in, in fact, I'm not going to use it. Delete that word. Delete it. Let's say it's the track that is not as strong as the rest on the album because the, this album does not have any weak songs. I'm giving you the, the, the end verdict now. It's a brilliant album. If you haven't got it, buy it. It's absolutely superb. It ranks up there for me with this one, which for me has always been the number one uh, Bring Me The Horizon album, Sempiturno. This is Sempiturno! Um, so, um, one by one, I haven't really got much more to say, say on that one. It's a, it's a good track, yeah, it's a good track. Um, that brings us to the last track, and I've got to read the title for this one, because this, this one I cannot remember. One day, the only butterflies left will be in your chest as you march towards your death. This track features vocalist, musician extraordinaire, Amy Lee of the band Evanescence, Evanescence, Evanescence. And um, now, my first thought when I, when I heard this, um, which is a duet, it sang as a duet between uh, Amy and Oliver, was an old, um, almost hair metalish type of ballad that Ozzy Osbourne and uh, Lita Ford did called Close My Eyes Forever, which is a fantastic ballad, by the way. 
uh, check that out if you if, if you don't know it. Um, this is like the close my eyes forever for the 2020s. It's a superb way to end the album. It's great that such a high profile uh, guest as Amy Lee was able to to to, to team up with this, and um, it's oh, it, 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 as I've already said, it's a ballad. It's a ballad type of song, and um, but it closes out the album nicely after we've had all the uh, the preceding 25 minutes of rock, rock, rock. So there you have it. That is my review of the new Bring Me the Horizon album. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoy listening to the album. If you have enjoyed uh, watching me today, then please subscribe to Greatest Rock and Metal, press the red button, and so you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, remember, we rock!